number nine. We function again here, but it tells you <coughs> that simplifying that to a single trig term gives you two cos, and also tells you that the maximum value of that is two, and it would be, because if you reduce that just to a cosine, it doesn't matter at all what the angle is, a cosine can only go from one to negative one, so if it's two times it, it'll go up to two, so the maximum value is two. So what's the difference with this? Well, I've got five times it. Well, five times it simply means I've got five times sine two x plus root three cos two x. And for the part inside the bracket here, the two x's rather, that's not going to affect the amplitude, that'll just affect the angle in the bracket. That'll come to five times. If this produces two cos x minus that, this will produce two cos two x minus pi up and six which is 10 times cos 2x minus pi up and 6. Again, it's a cos, it doesn't matter what the angle is. The most it can do is go from 10 to negative 10. So the maximum value is 10, which is answer B. Number 10. Reconciliation again, only this time it says, what's the value of k? For the limit to exist. Well, that factor, the k minus 2, must be a proper fraction between 1 and negative 1. And immediately that gives you two in equations. Either I've got k minus 2 is less than 1, take the 2 across and add it, it gives me k is less than 3, well, narrows it down to two of the answers. Taking this side of it, negative 1 is less than k minus 2, taking the 2 across negative 1 plus 2 is less than k, so 1 is less than k. Put those two together, k is between 1 and 3. 1 and 3, answer C. There is another way to do this using that absolute value. If you write k minus 2 is less than 1 instead of this part of it. And what that absolute value means is the size of that. In other words, the distance of k from 2 can be answered in a number line. If I draw down a number line briefly, what this says is the distance of k from 2, well there's 2, has to be less than 1. Well if that's 2 and you've got to be less than 1 away on either side, then you're stuck within this range here. You have to be between 1 and 3. Number 11, transformation of a graph. Well, I'm not going to draw all these different pictures down because you can either look at it and think, now what does this do? It doubles it, so it's stretched to twice the height and then it's lifted up one. Not moving across the way at all. So it'll still be at two, and that's the only point that's mentioned in all of these answers. Is where would this point go? It would still be too long, but if you stretch it to twice the height, it'd go to six plus another one. That should go to the point two seven, and the only one with two seven in it is the answer C. Or doing it purely arithmetically, if you like, what that says is the new y coordinate is two times the old y coordinate plus one, and inside the bracket there's no change. So 2, 3 would go to, inside the bracket, there's no change, so the x stays as x. And this says the new y-coordinate is 2 times the old y-coordinate plus 1. So again, there you've got 2, 7. Number 12. What restrictions are there on the domain? What numbers can't you put in? Well, you can't put something in that'll make a denominator equal to 0, because you can't divide by 0. So x squared plus 6x minus 16 cannot equal 0. Well, factorise that. We've got x times x. That must be 2 times 8 of a difference of 6. And the bigger one's positive, and that leaves negative for the other one. So that means you've got, taking the two inequalities, x can't be 2 and x can't be negative 8. Can't be 2, can't be negative 8, that's answer A.